My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people make friends, just trying to help you make some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. And we do not know how things will play out in Ukraine, although the positive chatter about peace talks sure did help propel the averages, Dow gaining 338 points, S&P rising 1.23%, and then NASDAQ jumping in out of control 1.84% with pretty much every speculative stock leading the way. But a gain is a gain. Now, I want to be optimistic about the negotiations in Ukraine, but Vladimir Putin is not a trustworthy person. For all we know, the news that Russia is pulling out of Kiev may be a total misdirection play. He's in that area. Who knows how far he went? There are many positive breaks in Putin's long war against Chechnya, too. But he still ended up leveling its capital, Grozny. More likely, if Russia's withdrawing troops from anywhere, it's only because they're getting their butts kicked. Nevertheless, let's talk about what's happened since last week, when the legendary Larry Williams told us on Mad Money that the stock market could be off to a big run because the S&P 500 had just retraced 50% of its decline since November. So far, Larry's been very right, pretty much as always. A few weeks ago, at the height of the gloom, I came out here and started reminding you about what could go right. What were the possibilities that an oversold market could really give us a good rally. I said you had to imagine the unimaginable. You had to be thinking maybe there could be a genuine bull run. It seemed fanciful then, but looks oh so reasonable in retrospect. Of course, one reason it seemed fanciful is that nobody ever rakes the bears over the coals for scaring you away from great opportunities. And yet that seems to be by their nature. You see, they're a lot bolder than the bulls and they never get called out, so why not? So let's look at everything the bearish conventional wisdom got wrong, starting with myself, because I'm not immune to this stuff either. I come to believe the hype about the great Russian war machine. I thought Putin had restored his army to its Soviet glory days. If those stories were true, then Ukraine, which has a fraction of the men and machines of Russia, would have lost the war weeks ago. Now Putin made a series of terrible judgments when he kicked off his invasion, not the least of them accusing Ukraine's Jewish president of being a neo-Nazi stooge. That may have been a sign of early onset senility, or he's a Holocaust denier. Either way, it was a sign that Putin puts way too much faith in his own propaganda. But while the denazification thing was insane, Putin was hardly alone in dismissing Zelensky as a lightweight, a former comedian who got elected mostly because he had already played the role of president on a sitcom. So Zelensky was a long shot to be as good as he is, and the Russian army turned out to be a long shot to be as incompetent as they are. Now that we hear Putin wants to back off from Kyiv, you've got to wonder, what's next? Does he want to move all his troops to, to the east and break Ukraine in two? East Germany, West Germany? I think that would be his style, though it remains to be seen how much territory Russia can keep. He can then declare victory, but at this point, any negotiated settlement is a victory not for him, but for the West. A stalemate makes Putin into a weak leader, and that kind of thing is lethal when you're in the strongman business. Of course, just a few weeks ago, Russia was a sideshow for our stock market. The main event was the Federal Reserve, specifically all the Fed chroniclers who told us that Jay Powell would kill the economy, even by now, in order to stamp out inflation. Sure, that's still a possibility, but do you mind if we just try to make some money while or before it? How about before it happens? That's right. We had a big bad event a couple of weeks ago when the Fed laid out an, an onerous path. But after an initial dip, that's when the market started roaring back because the Fed's rate hikes had been well telegraphed. We just needed to get it over with. Now, many of the big name strategists then warned us that the Fed might be ushering in a bear market, which makes me wonder where the heck have these guys been for the last four months? The Fed ushered in a bear market in November. It's astounding to me that highly paid professionals went out of their way to caution you about something so far in the rearview mirror. We've been talking about that since November right here, that the bear market was here. Unless you made a lot of money for your company, 
but doing real things and returning the money to shareholders. It's just going to be a bear, and it has been. If anything, businesses in this country welcome higher interest rates because inflation is eating them alive. If the Fed could break the upward spiral of price increases, then companies would have better margins. They wouldn't need to rely on endless price hikes to sell their stuff and deliver good earnings growth, which is just, in the end, ruinous for them. Of course, the biggest weapon against the bulls was the possibility of an inverted, whoa, whoa, oh, just a second, an inverted yield curve. <laughs> Where short-term rates cross above long terms, which is supposed to forecast, if not presume, a recession, so you had to get out of stocks immediately. <laughs> Holy cow, is that wrong? An inverted yield curve may be a bad sign, but it's one of those things that's predicted 12 of the last six recessions. Do you mind being more accurate than that? There's even debates about if and when and how or if we had one at all or did it happen at 2 o'clock or maybe it was last week. Now, maybe it was last night. Now, if you missed it, well, in, well one of the things that you know is you're not going to get lost in the 2 and 10 Wally world on this show. Then there's the hand-wringing about earnings. While I try to discourage short-term trading, the earnings calendar simply wasn't in favor of the bears, as no stinkers reported. In this CNBC Investing Club, we teach you that one of the most important elements of managing your own money is getting a great cost basis. This is not talked about much at all. The average price you paid for your stock. Most of the problems I see in investing often stem from getting a bad basis, buying too high, which regularly leads for many people to selling too low. I want to produce the opposite results, which is why I'm always preaching about the need for discipline. Earnings won't be perfect. People found fault in McCormick today and at one point Lulu tonight. But the stock of Adobe got crushed last week on its quarter. And have you noticed that it's now higher than when it reported the so-called awful quarter that I told you I liked? Which leads me to uh, one more giant grievance that I have against those who scared you into selling near the lows or kept you on the sidelines. Not only did they rely on Fed speak as well as doom and gloom talk, they even became selective chartists. At the worst moments, they put out the fabled death cross pattern, where the short-term 50-day moves above the average of 200. Another thing that's not a good sign, but the name sounds so much worse than the reality death cross. I mean, who doesn't want to talk about that? Now, this death cross came at the exact time when Larry Williams, who's a historian, told me that if the S&P can bounce authoritatively, in other words, that a 50% retracement of the previous decline, if we got that, then the market would be off to the races. He pointed out that we've seen this pattern 21 times since 1929. 21 out of 21. It's produced a longer-term rally than everybody thought. Now it's up to like 22. Plus, we had that oscillator I used, the one from Standard & Poor's, and extremely oversold levels. I have a doctrinaire approach to this indicator when it's too negative. You have to hold your nose and buy something because it means the market's a coiled spring. We've got an incredibly negative reading at the bottom, and it turned out to be an incredible buying opportunity. Unfortunately, that same oscillator hit a very positive number today. You should check my Investing Club morning meeting uh, that I do with Jeff Marks, if you want to know more. My discipline says it's time to pull in your horns a bit, especially after just the completely insane amount of speculative buying we saw today. We've been scaling back a bit for the Chapel Trust, although we still want to buy some stocks after the oscillator uh, settles down. But we're chiefly interested in the oils and the agricultural names, which have been hit by Putin's promises. The bottom line, you know, when I was a little boy, I saw this wonderful Broadway show, Promises, Promises, with the late Jory Orbach. You may remember him from Law & Order. Unlike Broadway's Promises and Promises, Putin's promises are made to be broken. Jerry in California. Jerry! Jim, big time West Coast. Booyah to ya. Can't get bigger than that, frankly, I have to tell you. Maybe or, or maybe Lululemon's goal, uh, gain after the close. But anyway, good to talk to you. What's up? So I took your advice. I named my dog after the best dog in the portfolio. My dog is named Snowflake. Tell me, do I have a good dog, a bad dog? Do I sell my well, dog? You know, most Can I dog... keep my dog? Can I no, keep my no, dog? No, your dog, only your dog has to live long. And it will prosper. Uh, not to mix my metaphors too much, but uh, Snowflake's going to take a little while. But you've heard Fred Slubin, Fra Frank Slubin. I was thinking about Fred Smith. Frank Slubin is going to win. Okay, he will win. So I want your dog to have a long and happy life, and I think it will because its name is Snowflake. All right? Putin's promises are made to be broken. On oh, Mad Tonight, FedEx CEO Fred Smith is stepping down to become executive chair. He's going to be chairman of FedEx. And I'm discussing his tenure and what the future could hold for the company with the man himself, an icon. Then Kramerica knows this is the year of real products and real profits. So I'll reveal a beaten down stock that fits our criteria and you'll want to buy it. 
and McCormick is caught in the crosshairs of inflation. I'm learning how the seasoning's kingpin is working to fight those headwinds with the company's top brass. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.